All right, so in this week's lesson, we're gonna be talking about minor triads and how you use them when you improvise. And there's gonna be a lot of information we're gonna go through, and I think there'll be some new ideas that maybe you haven't thought about when it comes to using minor triads, both in rhythm and lead playing, some embellishments and some things that you might not have thought about. Now, this is a part two to last week's lesson. So last week's lesson was called Triads Are Amazing, and we looked at how to play triads all over the fretboard, how to use them when you improvise, and there was a song at the end of that. It was a really good lesson as a sort of a beginner lesson to getting into triads and understanding how to create them and how to find them. So I would recommend you starting with that part one video. I have a link to that in the description below. And then we're gonna continue with that information, the knowledge from that previous lesson, and we're gonna continue that in this video. So if some of this is moving too fast or you don't understand the terminology or the references, go back and watch the part one video. Link to that in the description below. So we're gonna go through all the educational material in this video. If you'd like to get the extra material, the MP3 jam tracks, there's a song we're gonna learn at the end, which is tabbed out, tablature for everything, the PDF diagrams. Uh, there's even some practice material. You can get those by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP486. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention is what is a minor triad? Just like we did last week, we talked about what is a major triad, and I explained that you take the first, the third, and the fifth note of your major scale, and you play them together in unison, and you have a major chord. So we looked at the key of G. We looked at the first note, the third note, and the fifth note out of that scale. You play them together, you have a G major chord. And we started off by looking at the notes in this E region. So we looked at three regions of the fretboard, the E region, the C region, and the A region. Now I'm talking about the cage system, and that was covered in that part one video. So if you're confused by any of this, go back and watch that. So to find this region, this G chord using the E shape, I have to find the note name on the first string. So I find my G note on the first string, and that tells me, okay, that's the upper triad and that's the lower triad, all discussed in that previous video. Okay, so what is a minor triad then? A minor triad is the one, the flat three and the five out of the major scale. So you take the same major scale, but you, you when you get to the third, one, two, three, you flat the third which means you go down this direction one fret on the guitar, that's it. The one and the five stay the same. So when you play that together now, it sounds like this. This is major, this is minor. The only difference is that third interval, you flat it. Now if you have trouble finding the third interval, if you didn't know that this was the third interval, for example, in that chord, in this triad, all you have to do is just work it out through the major scale. You can do that by ear. Just count the notes until you get to the third and then flat it, go down one fret, that's it. That's all you have to do. So that applies to all of the, the same regions that we, we discussed last week. I'll kind of go through that quickly. So if we look in, if we're up here in this E shape, we take the upper triad and then you flat the third. So there's your upper minor triad and here's your lower minor triad. So you have this one and this one and they both share that same third interval. So you just flat it in that one place and then you've got it for both triads. So you have upper, lower. And then we come up to the C shape. It's our G chord using the C shape. Same thing applies. Now this in this shape, you've got your third interval in two spots. And your upper triad, you've got it here. So you just lower it, it's on your first string. So it looks like that or sounds like that. And then in this lower one, which is down here, your triad is on the fourth string. So you lower that, and it looks like that. So here's what our two triads look like. You have this shape, and you have this shape for your G minor triad out of the C area, so the C shape. And so now we have four triads. We have one, two, three, four, and by the way, the other thing I just want to mention about this shape, that should look familiar. That's the same shape as your D minor triad that you probably learned down in first position. Just wanted to mention that. It might make that a little easier to play that shape. There's your G minor, your G minor. And remember, the note name on your second string is what tells us that. So this note, which is shared in both of the chords. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. And then we come up to our A shape 
And remember, it's the note name on your third string that tells you that. So you find your G note on your third string, which is up here on the 12th fret. And this would be your G triad, the top part, and then the, the bottom part, the upper and the lower. So you find your third interval. In this case, it's on the second string, so it's that note. So you get this little stair step, which is very easy to play. 10th fret, first string, 11th fret, second string, 12th fret, third string. That's our upper G minor triad, our lower G minor triad in this area. Looks like that. Now that's the same as your A minor shape in first position. And hopefully that makes sense. If we were to take our major chord and you flat the third, you've got the minor. The same would be true down with this A down in first position. There's our A major, right? And you flat the third to get the A minor. Same with the D down here. There's our D chord. That's our third. You flat the third, but to keep the other two, there's your D minor. Hopefully you can start to see this. Oh yeah, okay, I know these chords and I've got all these shapes memorized, but maybe you didn't understand that it was just flatting the third that made that minor chord. And so anyway, that's what we have. So we have our G minor up here, the upper, and then the lower. So let's put them all together. We have six of them now. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then after that, you would just repeat. You come up to the, the 15th fret if you wanted to keep going. All right, so just like we did last week, we're gonna take that information now and we're gonna apply it to a, a simple little exercise. It's actually kind of fun to play, especially if you're playing along with the jam track. Uh, and, and, and this is a really good way to practice that. We're gonna be looking at our minor one our minor four and our minor five chord. If you were to take the one, four, five, G, C, and D chords, but we make them all minor. That's what we're gonna be doing. So um, I'm gonna assume you can work out how to play now your other chords. We just went through the G family. For your C chord, using the E shape, you'd come up here and you'd play it like this. Same thing that we did for the G. You just have to find the right starting note, right? Which is, if we were using the E shape, it's on the first string. And then you come up to that C shape, which would be up here upper and lower, and then lastly, our A shape, upper, lower. There's the little stair step, right? So that's, and then you do the same thing for your D chord, you just slide that up two frets. Now that was covered in more detail in last week's lesson, uh, but let's take that now and go through that practice exercise. It's gonna be the same cadence that we used last week, same exact uh, sound. The, the jam track is pretty much the same. I had to change one of the notes on the bass line so that it would fit in a minor context. I had to flat the third note. Um, that's what, what I had to do. So we're gonna play it like this. What I'm doing is I'm staying on the top three strings. So that we're gonna do it just like last week. Start on the top three th strings. We're gonna start here with our G minor. Then we play our C minor because it's close by. Slide that up two frets. That gets us to our D minor. And then we play our G minor again in this position. You're always just looking for the next nearest neighbor as you keep moving this way. And then we start the one, four, five again, starting here. So we have one, four, that's our C minor. There's our D minor, and then we come to our G up here, G minor. And then we start it from up here. We have your G minor, C minor, D minor, and then we conclude on our G minor up here. That's a really good way to go through those minor chord relationships on the top three strings. Now let's do the same thing, but on strings two, three, and four, the lower triads. I'll go through this quickly. We'll start down here with our G minor. We'll go G minor, C minor, D minor, to our G minor here. Let's keep going. G minor, C minor, D minor, G minor. Let's go one more. C minor, D minor, up to our G up here. 
Now there's obviously the jam track that goes with this and the practice was which is all tabbed out. So if you want to slow that down and, and play through it that way, you have that option. Um, the last way that I did it was I mixed the upper and lower. And I think this is a really good way to just get your brain in gear and to start really being able to see these triads. So we did the same cadence, G, C, and D, but we started on the lower. And then we went to the upper. So you do you start the lower G minor and then you go the upper C minor like this. So you go lower, upper, lower, upper. And we just keep going. Now this time we start with the upper and we go upper, lower, upper, lower. So we go upper, lower, upper, lower. Let's keep going from here. We're gonna start with the lower. We go lower, upper, lower, upper. So we have lower, upper, lower. And then we conclude with our upper. And that's just a really good way to kind of go through that and mix those up, those, those different triads. All right, now let's talk about a few interesting things you can do with these minor triads. And the first I wanna talk about is how you can use them over major chords. Last week, you did this already, and you might not have thought about it, but last week we talked about a G6 chord, and I showed you how to play, this would be the uh, in the E shape here, the upper triad there. I showed you how you can add one note to that to get a, a six sound, so that would be a G, and that would be a G6. But just adding my pinky to the fifth fret, second string, adding that E note. If you look at those notes, you're gonna realize that's a minor triad. That's one of the shapes, one of the three shapes we've just learned, right? And so that when I realized this for the first time, it kind of blew my mind. So inside of a G6 chord is an E minor triad. An E minor is the relative minor of G. I, don't, I won't get into relative and minors and majors and all of that in this video. I'll assume you, you, you know that. If you don't know what that is, leave a comment. But, but basically, there's an E minor triad that lives inside of this G chord. You can play a G chord. If the band is playing a G chord, or the bass player is thumping a G note, you can play an E minor triad, and it's gonna make that sound like a G6 chord, because inside of a G6 is an E minor. So, for example, if I was playing I was just playing this major thing and I came up here and I played an E minor triad up here using the little stair step shape. I was just sliding around with it, you know, playing it chromatically, but I'm playing the E minor triad. It didn't sound like a minor chord at all. It sounded happy, upbeat, but it's because it was coloring that G sound like a G6 chord. So just remember that inside of a, a six chord is a minor triad. If I play the E bass, it sounds totally different. Now it sounds sad, right? But put the G in the bass, you get a different sound. And remember last week we talked about a six chord and if you move that chord down two frets, you're playing a nine chord. Well, the same thing is true. Obviously this nine chord, when I move that down two frets, that, that minor triad is another minor chord. That's a D minor chord. But with the G in the bass, I get a G nine. So it sounds happy. It doesn't sound sad at all. If I put a D in the bass, then it sounds sad. But you put the G in the bass, it sounds happy. So if the band was playing a G, or you you, you know you, you were playing along, improvising, and the song was had a G chord, G major chord, you could play that D minor triad, and it's gonna sound like a G9 chord. It's gonna color it in that way. You The way that you might think about that is, it's the fifth interval of your major scale, D as one, two, three, four, five. You just take that fifth interval and play the minor triad of it. And that's one way to get at that. The last one is, uh, is a major seven chord, which we didn't talk about at all last week. But if you take your, going back to our G triad here, G major triad, if you take that triad and you flat the one, you, take the, you leave the, the three and the five, but you take the one, that G note, you flat it. You go down one, you play them all together. Now you're getting a G major seven, which is that kind of dreamy sounding chord. In jazz, quite a bit is very commonly used in that. But if you look at that, when I did the flatted the one there, I'm creating that little stair step. That's a, a minor triad. That would be a B minor triad. 
and B is the third interval of your G chord, so you can think of it that way. So if you play the third interval of your major scale, but play that triad, you're, you're playing a major seven sound. And you could work that into your lead playing as well as an arpeggio. You could do something like, working that, that sound into it. But that's what that is. There's a, there's a minor triad that's in there, and it's your B minor triad. So over a G chord, I can play an E minor triad to get a G6 sound. I can play a D minor triad to get a G9 sound, or I can play a B minor triad to get a major seven sound. So those are all major chords, but they have a minor triad that lives inside them. All right, the second point that I wanna make, and this one's really easy, is when you're just looking for a little filler, if you've got a minor chord that's hanging out in a song, you can always, let's say it was an A, you can always go up two frets, by up I mean this direction, towards the body of the guitar and play that minor triad and then go back down. It's just a nice little filler. I use this all the time. It works for all your triads, all your different shapes that we went through. You can do that kind of thing. You could also do chromatically. Walk it, you know, step by step down. That kind of thing. So that's just another embellishment that, that I use quite a bit. Um, just wanted to mention that. And the last one is a minor line cliche. Now you've heard these before. That's that sound. So it's a minor chord, but you're taking the one, taking the G note, so I'm playing a G, uh, G minor chord here. I'm taking the one, I'm walking it down, walking it down again, Walking it down again. I could take it from any of those G notes. So if I was playing it up here, I could play it like this. So that would work on any of these triads that we learned. So if we were playing our G up here in the A shape, your G note is on the third string there, right? So that G note would be the note that you walk down. You just have to kind of work it out. You'd leave your other fingers, so you go like this. And you could do that for any one of these. And that's just a really nice way to embellish around that, that minor chord. It's just a really pretty thing. You hear it in songs all the time. I don't want to mention them for copyright reasons, but I'm sure a lot of ideas are coming to your head as you hear that. It's called a line cliche, and it's very commonly used over minor chord like that, a minor triad like that. All right, so we've covered lots of material between that part one video and this video, and I thought a good way to kind of wrap it all up would be to create a little composition that would be pretty easy to play and something you can play by yourself. You don't even need a jam track. It'd be a good way to practice it all. And so I have a standalone composition, some minor key. There are some major chords in there, so we're borrowing some stuff that we learned last week. There's line cliches. I didn't get every concept that we talked about, but a lot of it is in here. So what I'd like to do now is play through that and then on the screen, I'm gonna annotate sort of what's going on so that you can kind of follow that. Now, it's gonna happen in real time, so if any of it's happening too fast, you can pause the video and just just make sure you understand what's going on. I'll put on there if there's a minor pentatonic scale lick or you know, if it's you know, kind of what's going on. But that way you can kind of see all of the stuff that we've talked about and, and you can see it in sort of real time. Now remember, as a premium member, if you want the tab to that song, I have that all tabbed out uh, and, and broken down that way. Uh, but otherwise, let's take a look at it and then we'll see you next week for something new. One, two, three.